In today's tutorial, we will focus on attacking the enemy by chuck chuck poof. Remember that you can always find this code in the GitHub page. More in the description. There is a little update from the last tutorial. I changed the sprites for the player and also added an animation for the attacking. So let's add an animation for the attack top attack bottom, attack side. In each animation, let's add the sprites for it. In my case, will be the frame 10 and 11. Let's add it to the baseline and the second animation. It will be 0.4 second and looped. So play it and it's working. We need to do same for the attack side and attack bottom. We can easily test these animations using the keyboard. I like to add a test 1, test 2, test 3. Now let's add a custom keys, for example, Z, X, C. And in the player script, just add a few conditions. Like, if event is pressed test1, let's do the attack bottom, test2, attack side, attack top for the test3. Let's test it. Now we have the bottom attack animation, now we have the side and the top. Everything is working. But instead of fighting with the air, we need to fight with the enemy. So we need to get this body, tell the player where is this body and attack it. So let's go to the mouse script, add a variable target body. It will be the reference to danger or safety body like the enemies or items. We need to upgrade the functions like play danger and hold this body in our target body. Do the same thing for safety. Target body body. And when the mouse is reset, the target need to be null. Next thing that we need to do is to pass the enemy body to the play danger function. To do this, let's go to the enemy script and pass the self word. This script is connected to enemy scene, so using the self word, we will pass the entire scene like enemy to the mouse and in mouse we will have the reference to this body in the target body. So next thing that we need to do is to use this target body in the player script. Let's go to the player script, add a variable to hold this target body. Will be the target body clicked. It's null by default. In the info function, we don't need any more these functions and the target body clicked that we add right before, it will be mouse target body. In this scenario, we will have the update the target body after each click of the mouse. So for test, let's print this. Let's print the target, 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 target body clicked. Test it. And now we have the null by default. When I click to the map, we have also the null. But when I click the enemy, we have the kinematic body 2D. And of course, when I click somewhere on the map again, we have null again. The next thing that we need to add are the enums. It will be enums for state. So first enum will be move and another will be attack. So Let's also add a variable to hold the states, so by default will be move. So the idea is like when the mouse is on danger mode, so let's also add a simple function. So if the animation, current animation will be the danger, then the danger is true. So when the mouse is on the danger mode, the our our player will be also on the attack mode. So if 
mouse is danger state will be state attack and else state will be move let's print this states by default when we want to print the enums it will be indexed from zero so move will be zero attack will be one so let's test it we have only zeros because we are moving when we are attacking we have the ones and again there is moving so now let's add a function for the attack to do this we need to have the attack range in our case will be like 20 pixels in the physic process function after checking the last mouse position let's check the state it need to be attack and the target body clicked need to exist next condition is uh, checking the distance between the global position of this node and the target body so the enemies this distance need to be less than attack range and if this all condition are true let's attack so let's add a new function attack and for now let's just print attack to check if everything is working correctly so here we have the player let's go to the enemy and our player wants to attack let's use the animation that we created before for the attack side top and so on let's go to the function attack and now we have the same logic like for moving if you want to know more about it you must visit the first part of the series when i'm talking more about this logic so making long story sh short we have direction from the global position to the target body and using this direction we will use the specific animation for the attack let's test it we are going attack and we are attacking from each side but our enemy is still alive so we need to kill it to do this let's go to the enemy script add a new variable it will be exported integer hit points equal 100 and also make the function damage and in this function it will be used from the player here we will have the damage count and each time this function is used the hit points will be smaller about this damage count and if the hit points will be smaller or equal zero we will delay this node using the q3 to make some damage let's go to the player script let's add a variable for holding the player damage player damage something like 40 and add a new function hit so if the target body still exists let's damage him the last thing that we need to add to make this everything working is to use this function in the player animation so in the animation let's add a new track will be called method track and in this track we can use our new function hit so let's hit it and also do the same stuff for the attack bottom and the same stuff for the attack top after this everything should work let's go to two 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 one two three yay we killed him <laughs> and that's all thanks for watching i really really hope that this tutorial wasn't too complex like if you like it subscribe for more and see you on the next video chuck, chuck.